Curly, where are you taking me? To our super secret clubhouse in our super secret location. For what? Chantal Houston to ask you very personal and invasive questions. Duh. Oh, cool. Get, Get in, in here. here. My name is Curly. And I'm Maya. And welcome to the, the super, super secret, secret bestie, bestie club. club. Podcast, a super secret club where we talk about super secret things. Yeah, like secrets that are super. That's what it is. In each episode, we'll talk about love, friendship, heartbreaks, men, and of course, our favorite secrets. Get in here! Amazing. Well, guys, welcome to another episode of the Super Secret Bestie Club. Today, Maya is actually not here right now. She's on vacation i don't know she like got on a space rocket and went to the moon and is chilling there um but today we have a another very and we will be missing maya if i don't we will be missing maya deeply in this episode um but today i wanted to welcome (laughs) i I could never be her there can only be one there can only be one i am the one the only one um but today i wanted to welcome another real life bestie of mine which is the amazing the beautiful chantal houston um, you may or may not remember her. You may remember her from her work at BuzzFeed with me. She it has created countless viral hits. Um, she was part of a what I call a YouTuber girl group called Ladylike. She now is the host with two of those girls called Money Honeys Podcast. Um, but she's one of my best friends. She's a creative director. She's an influencer. She's a director, director, a writer, a vegan, <laughs> a cat lady, a lesbian. No. Maybe. Oh, okay. (laughs) Shows you how tight we are. Um, But that's kind of like what we're here to talk about today because one of the things that we always, by the way, Shanti, I talked to her like six times a day. We literally got off the phone like 30 seconds ago. Yes. um, Talking about life, our usual stuff. We check in several times a day. Um, I forgot to tell you, I made an appointment with uh, an allergy doctor. So I'll finally be figuring out my allergies. Oh, Quick thank sidebar. goodness. Oh, wait. Sorry. ADD brain. We do this thing called How's Your Spirit? And I'm only asking you How's Your Spirit because I want to tell you about mine. So. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Good? Great? Time for me. <laughs> wait, before you go. Okay. Before you go with How's Your Spirit. I, my spirit's great. Um, I, um, uh, how's your spirit, Curly? <laughs> <laughs> I... Um, Made an appointment with an allergy doctor and I called them and I was like, hey, what is the process of figuring out like how these allergies work? And they were um, talking about how they do this like test where they poke you a bunch of times. They were like, we do 60 like environmental allergies and then 60 like uh, I think like food allergies or whatever. And I was like, "Um, so I'm going to get poked 120 times. And she was like, yeah. And I'm like, wonderful. And she, I was like, do you guys do like any sort of like sedation or like, is there a laughing gas involved? Or she's like, no. And I could hear her like trying not to giggle on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> it's pokes, girl. It's pokes. Have you had it done before? No, but it's Well, then pokes. how are you? I, I know someone who's had it done before. And okay, well, we don't all have, to have the same pain tolerance. <laughs> and then, girl, I get my period every month, so <laughs> you, oh, can endure, you can endure pokes. Don't I know pokes. it. <laughs> <laughs> I know when all my girls are on their period, I'm like, oh, my God, here we go. <sighs> it's, um, it's fine because I'm usually on their cycle, too. I'm usually, like, super moody. You um, are. But we cycle together. We do. How's your spirit? Um, my spirit is pretty good. I had a, a really good week, um, for just a, a lot of really cool, um, creative stuff happening. Uh, you and I went to every concert this week we in did. Los Angeles. Yeah, we <laughs> so, did. Yeah. What did we do? We, what shows did we do? So we started off with, uh, the sweat tour with Charlie XCX and Troy Sivan iconic we were I jumping up and many down notes. the entire I time many notes uh-huh. what do you mean you had an amazing well, I had to virgo time. i virgo everything as you know so i just remember we laughed i was like oh my god I had the best time ever however i have notes <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. what else did we yes do? so we had an amazing time amazing seats um and then we went and saw one of my good friends um his name is i am not shane and so we saw him perform um, and then we went to Remy Wolf, which was iconic. Love. Remy Wolf was amazing. Remy Wolf just like no notes. Yeah. 
Icon, just like artist, artist. Remy Wolf, check her out. She is, I keep describing her as just being this kind of like Janis Joplin. Yeah. Like vibe entertainer who just is a vocal powerhouse that mm-hmm. can do no wrong. She does this thing where um, she asks the audience to give her a word and she will make up a song with her band in real time about this word. And it'll be fantastic and amazing. And so good. It's so good. It was really good. High spirits. High spirits this week. Good. I'm glad. I have another concert left in my week. I'm taking my mom to Ana Gabriel tomorrow. So, which by the way, I'm going to the Intuit thing, the Intuit Dome. Oh, I love the Dome. I've never been. I thought it was going to be at the Forum. It's at the Intuit. I didn't realize you have to download a whole ass app. Yeah. To get your tickets, which is fine until you're trying to tell your Latina 60 or something year old mother to download this app to find her tickets. It was like, girl, I'll just no, just, just do it for her. I'll do just it see for you. Her. I'll do it. We'll do it in the car. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's no, <laughs> there's no way. There's no way. She, she's just a girl. She's just a girl. We're all just girls. I'm just a girl. I know. We're all just, you know, living on this rock that's just like going through space and time and whatever. Anyways, Anyways. Um, we met each other years ago at BuzzFeed. Mm-hmm. When I was still working in the canteen, the kitchen, and you were a, were you like, what were you called? Oh, what were you called? Junior producers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was a junior producer. So I'd gone wow. from intern to fellow and then um, was hired full time. And so I was a junior producer at that so point. So did I meet you as a, I think I met you as a full junior producer. So you were making yeah. content at BuzzFeed. And yeah. I, do you remember the first time we ever met? Do you remember the first time seeing me or like meeting? I, I don't, and that's wow. a, that's like a big thing with me. Wow. Like so many of my friends are like, oh my God, I remember exactly when we met. I'm like, I don't, I don't know why. I like, my my brain doesn't hold those memories. I don't remember, I, I just remember knowing you. You know what's wild is that I, you, I remember when I meet people uh-huh. and I remember it rather romantically. I don't remember us meeting. <laughs> like I don't remember us. <laughs> I don't. I do have one memory that I bring up to you a lot. Uh-huh. Is that when I used to stock the canteen and I had like a, I had like, I was only allowed to put out a certain amount of chips, and once those were gone, in order to like maintain our budget for the kitchen, I couldn't take more out. But I didn't give a shit. It wasn't my money. So if people came in and they asked for shit, I'd be like, yeah, here's let's go get, let's go to the inventory. Mm-hmm. And so after a while, people just knew that the inventory quote inventory of the chips was just like a little bit above like it was just like on a, on a shelf like the top shelf of a shelf yeah like co- costco vibes yeah how would i say that the top shelf of a shelf um so you were reaching over to get some chips and i think i was helping you and i think one of your videos you had just released a video which was not very buzzfeed like at the time it was yeah. like writ- was it like written word or it was something it was like a love um yeah no it was just it was it was it was pretty scripted um, mm-hmm. but it was, it was sort of like a romantic, like scripted, it was, it was kind of like a little mini indie. And so okay. like a little mini remember, indie It was about movie. love. Do you remember what it was about? I, um, yeah, I remember it, it was, it was something like that. Like it was, it, it was very like romantic. I, d- I don't remember the full thing. Oh, I think it was like, you have a Facebook crush or something and then you meet IRL. I don't know. I'll have, I'll have to watch it. I haven't watched it in years if i remember correctly it was between you and a cis man Mm -hmm. in this video yeah nick ross which brings us to our topic um Mm -hmm. which i should have said this earlier i wanted to there's many things that we could explore and talk about um but one of the things that we don't really talk about is your sexuality like clearly from the get-go of me introducing you (laughs) Um, And that is something that I feel like we kind of, I was there as you discovered this, as you were like growing up and figuring out about yourself. Because when I met you, you were kind of talking to the epitome of a cis man at BuzzFeed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you guys were kind of dating. And then you guys have a funny story about how you guys decided that you guys wanted to talk about where this dating life was going and you both sat down from each other and decided that it wasn't working for both of you. Yeah. Yeah. In the most benign yeah. <laughs> way to break up with somebody. Yeah. Um, and then you were gay. 
So what happened, or do you identify, what do you identify as, if I can ask you? Um, I identify more, more as queer. Um, okay. And so, like, there, because for me, there, there isn't really, like, one label that kind of encompasses all of it, um, because I do also identify as being on the asexual spectrum. And so that's why, to me, queer just kind of, like, denotes everything, like, who I'm attracted to and then also how I'm attracted to them. Oh, interesting. How you're attracted. Can you differentiate that, like what you're attracted to and then how you're attracted to them? Yeah. So for me, like gender, gender doesn't really matter. So I've been romantically interested in and with people across the entire gender spectrum. Um, So your gender doesn't really matter to me. Cis, trans, I don't really care. Um, I have more of an inclination like towards just kind of like andro boyish people. Um, but in regards to like how I experience that sexuality, so I identify as demisexual. So for me, I don't feel those romantic or sexual feelings for someone unless I'm very emotionally connected with them. So like, I would never be a person to like have a hookup or anything like that. Um, like I have to be pretty much in a relationship with you. So you have um, never in your entire life had a one night stand? No, and I probably wow. never will. I don't. I don't have an interest in it. It's not your thing. Yeah, not my thing. Yeah. Well, I don't know I, if they're I, my I only... thing either. I think they just kind of happen to me, and I'm like, oh, okay. What do you, what? <laughs> do you know what I mean? I think that, I don't know that one night stands necessarily, I don't know that, well, maybe some people seek it out, but I'm very like, yeah. I guess we're sleeping together. Oh, it happened. And then you're like, oh, I guess I never heard from them again. Okay. That's what it was. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 Whereas like for, for me, I don't even experience that sexual attraction without feeling deeply emotionally connected to that person. You said a bunch of terms that. I don't know that a lot of our listeners would understand. You mentioned androsexuality, which is the attraction to people who present a little bit more male or well, masculine. Well, I I don't know. I I is androsexual a term? Yeah. Oh, I I yeah. actually didn't know that. Oh, wow. I I, I was just talking about like um, the types of people that I think are cute. <laughs> yeah, and <androsexuality. laughs> like, like, like that part is like actually not that deep for me. It's just, you know, it's like, oh, what's your type? I tend to like people who are a little bit more boyish or who might be, who might like be a little bit more on the androgynous like gender presentation. Yeah. Androsexuality. Let me accommodate myself. Um, androsexuality is an identity in which a person has attraction to masculinity. Um, so I love that you said that, but then you said the word demisexual. And then I was like, that's where I, I don't know what demisexual is. Yeah. So, so demisexual is on the, so like on the sexuality, you can be like on one side, it's like asexual, aromantic. And then on the other side, you have like sexual and like biromantic, heteroromantic, homoromantic, kind of like who you're, who you're attracted to them, uh, or who, who you're attracted to. Um, and so demisexual just means where I'm like, I'm not, I I wouldn't call myself, you know, fully asexual, aromantic in, in that, like, I do experience attraction to people and, I do have those sexual feelings towards people, but I just really, I really need to have that emotional connection without that emotional connection. I don't, I don't feel those. I can feel like romantic towards you, but I don't feel those sexual feelings towards you without an emotional connection. I definitely, so it has to build. I'm probably going to ask you a lot of super ignorant questions and I'm probably going to, I don't know if I'm going to upset people, but it's just like, I have questions. I'm sure people that are listening have questions. Mm -hmm. Um, But like, did you always know this about yourself that you might be on a spectrum outside of heterosexuality? No, not at all. Um, And I think part of that also is because like I, I, it's really rare for me to like experience 
an actual crush on someone. Like it's really, really rare. And so I'm the opposite. I get crushes on everybody. I see you in the I hallway know. and I'm like, well, you know this. We'll be in the car and I'm like, God damn, that man. You're like, it's just a man. Yeah, I'm like, Let, okay, a, a man walked by. You caught a whiff yeah. of a man. <laughs> Y'all, yeah, Curly yeah. also one time tried to tell me that he was asexual. I was like, bitch, what are you talking about? Well, because also my relationship <laughs> to sex is very different, right? Like, mm-hmm. I also am like... When I'm engaging sexually, I can't help but think of, like, chimpanzees, like bonobos, and how when I look at videos, for example, like on the Discovery Channel or anything, and I watch chimpanzees engaging, I'm not watching it, but there's, like, a scene or something, I'm like, oh, how, they they don't, it doesn't look like anything to me except for these two primates rubbing genitalia together, and that's it. (laughs) Like, that's just, that's it. And so when I'm engaging sexually, that's all I can think about. I'm like... Oh my God, we're fucking alien primates just rubbing our privates on each other. And <laughs> in our brains, we make it so much more, right? Like we make it like this, like. Well, because there's the emotion behind it. It's the emotion. It's the yeah. romance. It's like, it's like I'm connecting to somebody. There's the science of like, you know, women's brains producing certain chemicals. I think, what is it, oxytocin or something? Like endorphins that just kind of (laughs) make the woman connected to their partner you know like Mm -hmm. all these different things that are going on but in my head I'm like this is so weird for me when I have sex all I can think about is like it's the same dance move but you're just changing positions it's like if you're doing the cha-cha you know the cha-cha slide that's like Ding, 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 ding. And it's like, no, it's slide like, to the left. Slide to the left. <laughs> slide to the right. And then you turn around and you face the wall and you do the same thing. Chris that's how Cross. I feel about Yeah, that's how I feel about <laughs> sex. I feel like it's like we're just doing the same, we're just doing the cha-cha slide, and now all of a sudden I'm in reverse cowgirl <laughs> position. And this is somehow supposed to be like fun. That's why so, I asked if I was asexual. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can I can see there being people on the asexuality spectrum who who may feel the same about like the act of sex as you feel, but I don't think that it necessarily you, you know, where I'm like I I actually don't feel that way about it. So like with you, do you not feel sort of like the emotional connection with it? Because for me, it's like it's all about emotion. Obviously, like body and stuff, but like so much about emotion. Well, I have a little bit more of like a thing where I'm like, if I like somebody on a deeper level, it's actually harder for me to engage with them sexually than Whoa. with somebody that I don't. You're opposite me. Yeah. So I'm, well, yeah, I, whenever I've had, like, boyfriends that I really, really like or that it, it kind of takes me a little bit longer because I'm, like, I don't want to lose them. I want to, like, really take this slow so I won't engage sexually versus if I'm, like, yeah, it is what it is. It's sex and that's it. Like, okay. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So so what I'm hearing is that I'm not asexual. I I would venture to say, like, you're probably not. Don't um, gatekeep. I, <laughs> <laughs> Just for me, no one else. Um, like, look, you can you can identify however you want to identify. However, as one of your besties who knows you pretty well, I would yeah. venture. I I would say pretty confidently. I don't think that you are. Asexual. Do you think that what sparked your? I guess your gay brain, your queer brain, what woke yeah. it up? Yeah. Well, so like I was saying, like, I just, I, I never really had, um, many like crushes growing up and stuff. And like the people that I happened to have crushes on just like were guys like cis guys. Um, and so I dated cis guys and like experienced, you know, real love, deep love, all of that. Um, which is why I don't identify as a lesbian, Um, even though now I'm like, I would, I would much rather be with someone who was assigned female at birth. Um, but I don't identify as a lesbian because I'm like, you know what? I don't, Harry Styles walked in this door. I'd be like, okay. You know, um, Harry Styles. Yes, bitch. Of all the men in this world. Never mind. I'm not going to yuck your yum. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> we say that all like the, the time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for me, it would be like the most, it would have to be like Gaston from Beauty and the Beast. And I'd be like, Woof. Well, I'm that, that's because If he was Mexican, who, though. Yeah. <laughs> that's because of who you're attracted to, where it's like, like also most queer women, bi women, pan women are like, we like Harry Styles because so like for me, I like boyish, like if we're, if we're really just being kind of like rudimentary about it, it's like, yeah. I like boyish girls and, and girly boys, you know? And so it's like basically people Do you think who, I'm a girly boy? Um, I wouldn't say you're girly. No, I wouldn't oh, say you're wow. girly. Okay, I'm, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. We would never work curly. We would never work. Um, yeah, <laughs> I don't think you're cur- I, I don't think you're girly, darling. As you s- sit there with your full beard and mustache and my back hair. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. yeah so no, you'd have to be hairless. I'm so okay, sorry. Well, you'd have to be hairless. Yeah. We might have to revisit your ideas of curly, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> problematic you're gonna hear first <laughs> i mean look i don't have a mustache but i could if i wanted to so uh, <laughs> okay so i interrupted could. you like 16 times i'm sorry but keep going oh yeah what i mean what was i even talking about oh so yeah so i i basically just um like happened to be attracted to like cis guys that i was around um and then in my early 20s Um, I basically just kind of had like a light bulb moment, um, with someone that I met and I was like, whoa, what is going on? Who was like, you know, it was my first sort of like same sex attraction that like couldn't be written off or couldn't be like denied because like, if I look back, I do think that there were maybe like two or three women that I had crushes on um but not like not anything that i would want to like act like on. yeah yeah nothing that i was going to do anything yeah. about you know um and so so yeah and then i just kind of had a light bulb moment where i was like holy shit and so i remember like calling um like my closest friends at the time and being like what does this mean and one of my best friends like all of her closest friends have come out as either like gay, bi, or queer to her since high school. Uh Yeah, like my my friend Julie, she is straight, straight, straight. I've like tried to convince her to not be, but she is, and that's okay, we accept it. Um, But so she's straight, and yeah, like every, all her closest friends are queer. And so she was the one who was like, you know, it, this is, this just happens. Like, it sounds like you had, like, she was like coaching me through it, which was so funny. This just happens. I think that's kind of the part that, um, I didn't mean to roll my eyes. I was taking a, a deep breath. Um, but, like, <laughs> I guess this is the part that I'm asthmatic and my allergies are kicking in, so I have to really concentrate on breathing. So I didn't roll my eyes at that. But this is the part that I get, like, um, very curious about. Yeah. Because I never had that, like, aha moment. I yeah. woke up, like, well, mine was a little bit different because I thought I was a little girl for most of I my life. I was about life, to so, say, yeah. yeah you, so, you, like, your aha moment was in... I feel like in the form of gender, of gender yeah, than, yeah, rather than sexuality. Whereas oh I've, my God. Uh-huh. I've never questioned my gender, but mm. um, I definitely had awakenings with my with my sexuality, and then I was like, "Whoa!" And so, you know, as you allow yourself to like accept it and explore it, um, then you can you just sort of like even it wasn't even until recently that I was like. Oh, actually, I do because I I've had attraction to people that look all different, you know. Like, but I I I've sort of been able to verbalize my quote unquote type a little bit more. Um, so, you yeah, mentioned I mean, that when you were talking to Julie, mm-hmm. that there was kind of like a little bit of like confusion in your tone. Was there yeah. like? a confusion in terms of like, was there like a fear? Like, were you like afraid of what this, of what was happening? This new emotion? I, I don't know. I think I was just like shocked. I I was like shocked by myself, you know, Mm -hmm. like, um, one of those moments where you're like, Oh, I can't believe I, I did that. You know, like if you, 
if you think that you're never going to go skydiving and then you go skydiving and then you're like, I can't believe I went skydiving. Like what the fuck? And so that was, that was more so what I, what I felt rather than, I mean, I also, I also grew up really Christian. Like I didn't grow up really around queer people. Um, and so part of it was just also being in different environments. Um, this is what I I find really beautiful is that like sexuality and how, we all identify is a lot more fluid than people really wow. understand, right? Sorry, my dogs are barking in the background, by the way. Chloe has like, Chloe, my little dog, as you know, is just living her best life, barking at everybody in the damn neighborhood. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's kind of super fluid and it's fascinating to me that people find out about their identity a little later on in life and whatever, and whatever that means to you. Like, you know, like, a safe space, right? Like to just be able to go in the way that you might pivot your career and the way that, in the way that you might change, want to change your style. Like it sounds crazy, but maybe that's also acceptable in terms of how you identify in sexuality and gender. Like you're just like, okay, here we go. Yeah. I'm just going to like pivot now. Yeah, absolutely. And like, I remember, um, some of my family in Mexico, when I, when I was in a same sex relationship, um, I remember someone saying like, well, are you sure it's just not like a phase and stuff? And I was like, what, who cares if it's a phase? You know, I was like, actually that, that line of thinking of like, it's just a phase. You're going to go back. I'm like, every boyfriend I had was a phase, you know, like, Having what's long wrong hair. With the phase? What's wrong with the phase? Everyone hasn't. We you have an emo phase. You have like a long hair phase, short hair phase. Yeah, you know, like yeah, you, your yeah. hat phase. You know, yeah, <laughs> I'm R. Like, R. Yeah, I'm like, who cares mm-hmm. if it was a phase? You know, and it's like obviously I knew what she was insinuating, and I knew that in that sense it was not a phase for me. But also, who the fuck cares? I guess I've never thought about it in that way. What do you think insinuating? What do you think a question like that insinuates? To, to me, I think it insinuated, like, well, is she just confused? And she, like, she... Which is, con- al- which is also okay. Which is also okay. Yeah, where it's, like, she's just confused and, like, strayed from the proper path, you know? Because, like, rooted in, for, for that person in particular, rooted in, like, Catholicism and stuff. And, you know, not being fully accepting at the time of queer people, you know? So it, it insinuated that I was confused and straying from the good and proper thing wow which is kind of crazy when you're like not necessarily like you don't i think it's a little bit shocking for you in a lot of ways too because you don't necessarily read as a queer individual you're not queer passing Um, i I know (laughs) You know, so I know it, there's been I re- there's been times where we've gone out and I'm like I think I look a little gayer today and you're like mm, maybe <laughs> sure if I'm it like, makes okay. you happy <laughs> I mean look this is the thing like I feel like we we understand and people in our circles understand that people can express themselves differently and yeah. and we're not always necessarily rooted in like stereotypes right I mean. Mm-hmm. But we also sometimes have our own stereotypes in our own head of what we expect people to look, how we expect people to sound, what they should think like. And I think that Mm -hmm. part of why I wanted to talk about all this too, these quote invasive questions, was because it's like there is a wide spectrum of how you can identify, which is beautiful in terms of like queer identity, because queerness allows you to kind of be like, no, I want like... I'm at a buffet and I want different things on my plate and I might want to have Italian. I might want to have Mexican on the same plate. I might want to have this. And like, there's nothing wrong with living a healthy, there's nothing wrong with living a healthy uh, expression of yourself. Um, I did have some more questions about you being asexual. Mm-hmm. Um, do you, and feel free to answer for yourself and perhaps not the entire asexual community, but like do asexual people, and I'm sure I could fucking Google this and it's not your responsibility to teach me or others, but you're my best friend. And we're here, so. <laughs> yeah. Et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. 
Um, but like, how do you experience like getting turned on? Like, do you do like, okay, for me, if I see, I, I'm a guy, I'm a man, right? So like we're visual. So if I see, I'm a gay man too. So if I see like a hairy chested man walk by me, my body and my brain immediately, I'm like, Shwee! like uh-huh. I'm, I'm into it, you know? Um, how do you ever, are you ever driving down the street and you see a beautiful individual that you're like, God damn. And you're just like, I don't know. Ahuga, and honking your <laughs> horn or like, how does that, <laughs> how does that work? Honking your horn. I'm so dead. Um, I mean, I will sense. So, I mean, like the answer is like, yes, like I can, I obviously know and understand, you know, beautiful people are beautiful people and people that I'm I'm like, whoa, you're so attractive. I'm like, yeah, I can, I can like see that, you know, but it's, it's more so that like it, it would be really rare and it essentially never happens that I would have the like sexual feelings at that point, you know, because I don't know them. I, I, I don't know them. I don't know anything about them. I don't have like an emotional connection to them. I'm just like, whoa, they're really pretty. I'm attracted to them. Let me go talk, you know. Let me go talk to them. Yeah. Um, do you, yeah, that's an interesting thing too. Cause I just feel like I'm like a lot of people when you talk and specifically gay men, I feel like sex is very important. Like yeah. I have found that the more I date gay men, the more that they're like, this is important to me. This is important to me. And an, an, a healthy sex life is important to me. Mm-hmm. And for years, I also, I mean, I also have like a different story, but like um, I was on finasteride for hair and that just depleted my sexuality. And for years I was like, what do you mean you want to have sex? Don't you want to just date your best friend? Like, what are you talking about? Like, what are you? And then now I'm like, oh no, like, let's do this. I want to play, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, have you ever felt guilty about your expression of sexuality? No, it's just me. Have you ever had a partner that's made you feel guilty? No, because the thing is, like, within a relationship, I am very sexual. Like, within, got it. you got know, it, got it, got so, it, got it, got like, it. like it, it's not, like, within a relationship. Like, I'm I'm usually the pursuer in, in my relationships, you know? Um, like, it oh. actually, yeah, because it's, like, like, if I'm in love with you, like, yeah, let's go, you know, um, which that's how it expresses itself for oh, me. So people who might be closer to the, like, truly asexual side of the spectrum might not actually have an interest in sex. But for me, I very much do. It just has to be someone that I'm emotionally connected to. Do you ever find that people that link asexuality that they will try to link it to just being insecure. I find that a lot of people Mm. who are like, no, I'm asexual. They're like, well, they're probably just insecure. Do you find that that has been something that you've ever dealt with? Have you ever heard that before? Um, not, I, like I personally haven't, but it's because I, I, you know, if honestly it doesn't really come up, you know, like it, (laughs) it doesn't really come up. So, um, because again, like if I have that emotional connection, like I'm, it's, it's not an issue for me, yeah. you know? Um, and so it's, so that's why like, I haven't felt guilty about it or I haven't had people sort of guessing it, you know, because yeah. if I, if I just say like, oh no, that in order for me to want to have sex with someone, I need to feel emotionally connected to them. Like that, that's not really a crazy thing to say, yeah. you know? I do feel like to answer my own not it's not really my own question it's just a thought that i had out loud i feel like insecurity no matter what you are any expression of sexuality could also encompass like an anxiety towards the actual act right like you could be identified as a gay person lesbian whatever in between and still be anxious about having sex um Mm -hmm. And so I think that like just they can coexist, but they can also they all also are just com- two completely different things. Yeah. Um, have you ever dated another asexual person? And what do y'all do with each other besides play board games? 
<laughs> no, um, <kidding. laughs> no, I have not. That's a joke, America. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, no, no, I, no, I have not. But then I think that also just goes into the um, where I fall on the asexual spectrum because it's a it, it basically it's like even just where oh, I fall on, on on the sexual spectrum, you know, where it's like I yeah. fall in the middle. You might fall on one side, like like a Kinsey scale, you know, where it's like you so fall even on one within side, the spectrum. The there's a spectrum. In the spectrum, there's a spectrum. And so where I fall, you can call it the asexual spectrum. You can call it the sexual spectrum. It's like where I fall is like, no, I'm still going to be like plenty intimate with my, with my partners. You know, I'm not, I'm, I'm actually not asexual. I'm just on the spectrum. I love that so much. Um, I have plenty more questions, but we are running out of time. Okay. Um, and I wanted to get into the Zodiac section. Shing, wing, 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 wing. <laughs> are you that familiar with like zodiacs or no because i feel like i always talk to you about it but i don't know that you talk to me that much about it no i i, I really don't know much i know that almost all of the really good producers in my life are capricorns oh my God, i know yes. that you're a virgo because virgos are obsessed with being virgos and I'm so dead. <laughs> <laughs> we just have we all have mirrors in our hands and we're like we're virgos i know that's all that's all we do. That's all we talk about. <laughs> Virgos are just obsessed with being Virgos. Um, and True. then... You would be yeah. too. <laughs> all defensive. Like, you wish, girl. Um, yeah, no, I don't I don't know. So, I, I, yeah, I don't really have, like, much of an opinion. I, I, I like them. What is your favorite sign? Like, who, what sign are you like? Oh, they're just, they're just fantastic. I've never met... A blah, blah, blah that I didn't like. I don't really know people's signs. I know so yours. You, yeah, what do you think about Virgos? Let's start there. Let's just go there. <laughs> um, I have two Virgos in my life that I'm particularly close with. You're one of them. And I love both of you. You're Is both your amazing. other Virgo equally as distraught and insane as I am? No. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm a straight shooter. No. I blame. No. Wait, are they September or August? Oh. Do you know this? I don't know. Well, that would explain a lot. Well, I'm a double Scorpio too, so that mean that would explain a lot. What do you know about Leos? Like you're a Leo. I am a Leo. I know that most people when they try to guess my zodiac or zo yeah, zodiac sign, when they try to guess my zodiac sign. Yeah. Um, when they try to guess my sign, they don't, they never guess Leo. What do you they, get? They always guess earth. There isn't ground, Virgo. right? It's earth. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say Virgo. <laughs> wow. Right? It's earth, earth, water. Earth, water, there's fire. A, yeah. Okay. There, there's and no air. ground. Oh, air. Okay. Yeah. 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 Cause they, they always guess earth. Cause they're like. You're just, you're very grounded. Like you have a yeah. soothing voice. And I'm like, I look, I don't know what to tell you. I'm a Leo. And then I, when I say I'm a Leo, they're like, oh yeah, it's the hair. I'm like, okay. <laughs> See, I would never take you as a Leo either. But I yeah. think that that's what, when I think about Leos, I actually feel like Leos are not as gaudy or opulent as people imagine. Yeah. Because to me in my head, Tauruses are actually more gaudy and opulent. Tauruses are very, are known for being uh very a little bit more like they like the gaudiness you know virgos mm. are materialistic but but tauruses are kind of into gaudy stuff um leos i feel like want attention in different ways they want to be acknowledged as like the expert on something something or like oh that's the go-to person for this um is my understanding do you concur or do you concur <laughs> yes or yes yes yeah. only one option <laughs> um i don't know i mean like it's it's it feels nice if people regard you as a knowledgeable person but that doesn't feel like it would just be a leo thing do you are you intimidated if there's another leo in the room no i generally don't know people's signs Wow, what is life like when you live in a world where you don't look at people for their signs? I don't understand <laughs> it. I don't understand it, well, vibes. I mean, my 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 best friend Julie is 
a Leo also. Oh, Leo and Leo. Yeah, Leo and Leo. Like our co-star is like, you guys are wildly compatible. <laughs> wow, wow. Yeah. Well, I think you and I are like note, somewhat compatible. Yeah, on co-star. I feel like we're great as best friends. I think if we dated, we would probably drive each other nuts because you'd be like, "You're insane," and I'd be like, "You're and you're fucking crazy." I feel like we'd be just driving each other insane, probably. <laughs> And Probably. that concludes the Zodiac section. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Well, Shanti, we always end it on, I want to say thank you so much for being so open and oh, as usual, dealing with my trolling um, <laughs> and stupid questions. And Not stupid, um, babes. You, thank you. Usually at the end, I always say as an homage to um, uh, Little Rascals, um, instead of saying like final thoughts, I, we say, how do you plead? So how do you plead? <laughs> I loved little rascals. That's not the question. I know. I was <laughs> saying that. <laughs> I'm just saying, I love the little boys that were like, like I can get a pickle for a nickel or like whatever it was that they said. You had a hard out in 10 minutes. I'm trying to get you out. Answer the question. <laughs> See, y'all, America, wherever you are, this is how every conversation with Curly and I goes. We literally, okay, when I actually went to sleep last night, I realized we FaceTimed, not even phone call, FaceTimed. We FaceTimed, Three yeah. times last, yesterday. <laughs> three, like, literally morning, noon, and night. FaceTimed you from my kitchen, FaceTimed you yes. from my desk, and FaceTimed you from literal, I was laying yes. down in bed. Important matters, <laughs> important matters to discuss. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yesterday was look how I can make my dog clap. <laughs> <laughs> it was very cute. Her little paws. I was like, her paws clapping. <laughs> <laughs> she did a really good job. She did a really good job. Corbella you know, we're indeed. household of entertainers. What can I say? <laughs> um, well, how do you plead? On what? I guess like, well, here's how I would plead. I'll go first. Okay. <laughs> Whatever it is that you identify as in this world, it's not really a plea, to be honest, but. A summary. It's like a summary, yeah. Like, how, whatever it is that you identify, like, don't feel shameful if you're not hurting anybody and you are doing it in a way that is safe for yourself. Um, and whatever makes you feel comfortable. Like, just, you know, live your best life within your own expression of who you want to be because we've only got one. Mm-hmm. Unless you're like me and you believe that you have thousands and you've been alive for thousands of years. And you continue <laughs> to be alive thousands of years. Okay, now you go. Okay. (laughs) Um, I mean, I agree with everything that you said. And the only thing that I would probably add is just that um, you don't have to put yourself in a box. You don't have to assign yourself a label. If a label feels helpful, go with it. If a label doesn't feel helpful, you don't need her. Leave her behind. I love that. And this is why I love you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Shanti, where can people find you on social media? Oh, um, uh, I'm, well, I don't know. I don't really do many social media things now, but um, my handles are Chantal Houston. On and you can everything. also find you on Oh, your podcast. my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> You're all trying to team me up, and I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, which is why I have a, th- a heart out in 10 yeah, minutes, because yeah. I'm I'm recording my podcast. Well, um, seven now, but go ahead. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> so I have a podcast with Devin and Freddie, who are also part of uh, Ladylike at BuzzFeed, and it's called Money Honeys. And so we talk about money finances and we talk about it from a very relatable lens because a lot of money and financial topics are dominated by men. And we want Absolutely. And as somebody who knows you, you're great with handling money, including sometimes my own. <laughs> you can find me guys at the Curly B Show on Instagram and TikTok. Um, find me talking shit about signs and basically just sharing thoughts thank you so much for listening to another episode of the super secret bestie club uh, please join us next week for a new episode and feel free to send us comments messages on any sort of topics that you would like to hear in future episodes bye, bye. make sure to hit that subscribe button to hear more episodes every single week 
The Super Secret Bestie Club podcast is a production of Sonoro in partnership with iHeartRadio's My Cultura Podcast Network. For more podcasts from iHeart, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. 